So we start off the shoulder examination by uh, looking at the patient first and the, we look from the front to begin with. What we look for initially are any scars or any wasting. So looking from the front and comparing sides at all times, looking for any wasting or any scars, looking at the uh, deltoid and the pectoralis major. Then we turn the patient around to the side, once again looking at the deltoid, always comparing sides and then finally looking from the back, looking carefully at the supraspinatus and infraspinatus fossa, looking, getting down low and checking to see if there's any type of wasting of either of those muscles or of the infraspinatus. The next part of the examination comes to feel and what we're feeling for now mainly in the shoulder is tenderness. So we start around the clavicle, we start on the medial side of the clavicle, we work our way out asking the patient if they feel any soreness or any tenderness. When we get to the AC joint we must compare sides, feeling one side and the other side, feeling for any swelling and then asking the patient if one side is, more, is sore than the other side. Then we run along the back of the acromial spine. After doing that, we come to the front of the shoulder, we feel for the biceps tendon, which is located just anterolateral over the humeral head with the arm in neutral. We palpate the tendon, we can roll it underneath our fingers, and then we roll the humerus to feel the tuberosities and the biceps tendon rolling underneath our finger. Once again, looking at the patient's face to see if there's any pain there. We also then put the arm into extension to feel the rotator cuff insertion as well. Okay, now we're up to moving the arm and uh, we initially start by looking at scapulothoracic uh, uh, symmetry and the, 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 particularly the symmetry of motion. So with the patient facing away from us, we ask him to lift both arms up in front of him. So just lift both arms up straight all the way up and then bring them down slowly and we're looking at the scapula to see if there's any asymmetry between the motion. If one scapula wings and comes off the, the, um, the, the thorax as well. Now we're up to the assessment of active movement versus passive movement. And this, this is one of the most critical parts of a shoulder examination. So when we're examining the patient for active movement, we ask, we check for forward elevation. So could you bring both arms up in front of you as high as you can? Excellent. And now bring them down to your side. Keep your elbows in at the side and now twist out. Excellent. And now turn around and face that direction, please. Put this hand behind your back as high as you can. And we can note that he gets to the uh, fourth thoracic vertebrae. Put this arm down and now try the other arm. And once again, he gets to approximately the uh, fourth thoracic vertebrae. So we're looking for the symmetry of movements of all of these motions here. Now having assessed the range of motion, we can now test power. So initially we test for forward elevation. So bring both arms up, just in front of you like this, roll the arms in, and this is testing particularly for supraspinatus. So keeping your arms there strong, don't let me push them down. And we assess not only for power, but we assess for weakness as well. After testing forward elevation, we test for external rotation power. So put your arms at the side, twist out, and then bring them back in. Now keep your arms there and do not let me push them in. Hold them there strong, hold them there strong. Excellent. Once again, testing for power and looking for any pain on the part of the patient. Now we test for internal rotation power. So arms at the side like this. Hold it there and do not let me push them out. Hold it there strong, strong, strong. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to test for the uh, power of uh, the subscapularis with a bear hugger test. Put this hand up on that side there. Bring the arm up. Keep it there and do not let me lift it off. Hold it there strong. Excellent. One very important part of a shoulder examination and examination of any joint is to be able to differentiate the difference between active and passive movement. We're going to uh, simulate here a, a situation where we've lost active movement, but passive movement is maintained. So uh, Tyler, if I could ask you to lift both arms up as high as you can. So on his left side, he's got excellent movement, but on the right side, he can only actively elevate to here. The big question we have to ask ourselves now, is there a problem in the joint which is causing stiffness, or is it a problem in the motor of the shoulder which is stopping him from lifting it up? So if he can only lift it up to here, if I cannot improve that any further, 
that tells me that the joint is stiff and it may either, may either be something like a frozen shoulder or osteoarthritis of the glenohumeral joint. However, if I'm able to lift it up all the way, then that tells me that it's only his active movement which is affected, affected but his passive movement is maintained. And that therefore implies that the motor of the shoulder, for example, the supraspinatus, the deltoid, or the nerves uh, su supplying those muscles have been affected. Now I'd like to demonstrate the situation where you have both a limitation in active and passive motion. So, Tyler, can you put both arms by your side and now twist out as far as you can. He cannot twist out any further on this side, whereas on that side he's got normal external rotation. My next question is, can I improve this passively? And as I grab his arm, I cannot improve that passively anymore. That tells me that he's got true stiffness in the shoulder joint, which is limiting his motion. And therefore, this could either be frozen shoulder or osteoarthritis in the glenohumeral joint causing that problem. I'm now going to do a knees impingement uh, sign. So what we're going to do is lift both arms up, Tyler, take them up as high as you can, and we watch his face. And on the right side, as he gets to the top, he gets pain. Is the pain over the top of the shoulder here? Yeah. So this is positive knees impingement sign. Another very sensitive impingement sign is known as Hawkins impingement sign. So we grab the arm, we forward, forwardly elevate the shoulder, and then we internally rotate. And if, if he's got a lot of rotator cuff pathology and impingement, this will cause him pain. Does that cause any pain over the top of the shoulder here? No. Okay. Next, I'm going to test for uh, pain over the acromioclavicular joint. So in addition to having done the tenderness over the acromioclavicular joint, another very sensitive test is where we take the arm across the patient and push it across as far as we can. And if he's got any problem in the AC joint, this will cause pain over the top of the acromioclavicular joint. Now we're going to assess somebody and simulating that they've got a rotator cuff tear involving supraspinatus and we're looking for a painful arc. So Tyler, take both arms out sideways and we're looking to see if he gets any pain. So he's got pain heading all the way up. Okay, so his pain is gone now. And when he, when he comes down, do you have any pain? It's worse coming down. Yeah, so classically these patients have a lot more pain also bringing the arm down and he had a painful arc from 60 to 120 degrees which is very common with somebody with a rotator cuff tear. I'm now going to be testing for anterior shoulder instability. Tyler, as I bring your arm back, you let me know if you feel like your shoulder is going to pop out. Try to keep your muscles as relaxed as possible. So here we go, bringing the arm up into abduction and external rotation. Stuck. Okay, now I'm going to do the relocation manoeuvre. Let me know if this makes your shoulder feel better. Yes, it does. Okay. I'm now going to be testing for posterior instability with the, uh, the jerk test. So what we do is we grab the arm and we're looking at the back of the shoulder here. As we forward reflex the arm and adduct the arm, we're looking to see if the humeral head subluxes out the back of the glenohumeral joint. After we've achieved the subluxation in somebody who does have posterior instability, we then bring the arm back into uh, extension and bring the arm to the side and we'll feel a jerk as the glenohumeral joint is relocated into the, uh, into the socket. All right, now I'm going to do the sulcus sign. So relaxing your muscles as much as you can, I'm going to pull down on the arm and I'm looking to see if there is a sulcus forming at just underneath the acromion here. And it's very important to compare sides and do that on both sides. Now I'm going to test for translation. So with the patient relaxed, Tyler, just relax your, relax your shoulder as much as possible. I gently hold the elbow, I grab the humerus, and I translate the shoulder anteriorly, and I translate it posteriorly as well, looking to assess the amount of translation, and most importantly, comparing it side to side.